So you're retired, you're bored, and golf isn't your thing, or maybe golf is your thing, but you're also looking for something else to do with your free time to stimulate the creative side of your personality. And I think photography should be that thing. I think it is that thing. And today I'm gonna tell you why I think that. So let's get into it and let's talk photography. So guys, as always, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. I'm assuming I have a slightly new audience here, so I'm not going to do the big sell today. I'm going to get into it. Now, this might seem like an odd topic for someone my age to talk about, but I've noticed, if you look at my subscribers, I notice I have a mixed bag of people that subscribe to my channel, people that do my one-on-one -on -one classes, people that do my physical workshops, people that are interested in my reviews, especially my Leica reviews. I think that actually makes a lot of sense because to be able to afford a Leica and lenses, you've probably had to work your whole lifetime to be able to buy that kind of stuff. So it makes sense that my audience, there's a good chunk of my audience that's at that retirement age. So first off, the intimidation factor. I just wanna get that out of the way right away. I know a lot of you out there that are older, not all of you, but I know a lot of you out there are intimidated by the technology. Camera technology, photography technology is changing so fast and it's probably a lot different than it was when you were shooting film back in the day or even shooting digital back in the day. And maybe that's a little bit intimidating for you. And I just wanna say, don't be intimidated by it. Photography can be as technically complicated or simplified as you want it to be. You can go back to shooting film if that's your thing. You can get really advanced technically if that's also your thing. But if you're not, you don't wanna go too deeply into retouching and Photoshop and even social media and posting and things like that with reels and all that. That's not your thing. It's cool if it is your thing, but if it's not your thing, don't be intimidated. Photography at its core is still what you remember it to be. It's still very simple. It's still about telling stories and the technical side has gotten probably even easier with the more advanced cameras. So if intimidation, if technological intimidation is a factor for you for not getting into photography, don't let it be. There's so many tutorials on YouTube. There's so many people like me out there that are here to help you. Don't be intimidated by it. That's what I wanna say first. Now let's get into the reasons why I think it's the perfect hobby for retirees specifically. First of all, it'll keep you active. Photography will keep you active on two fronts. It'll keep you physically active because taking pictures requires you to move around a little bit. Sure, you might start off taking pictures of your dog or your cat. Like I take a lot of pictures of my dog and during the pandemic, a lot of dog pictures because it couldn't go anywhere. But, and that's fine, it's fine to do that, but at the same time, that's gonna get boring to you at some point, and you're gonna to wanna to venture out. So for your morning walk, or your weekly walk, or maybe you like to go, maybe you live in the suburbs and every once in a while you wanna go into the city. Or maybe when you travel a bit, it'll give you a little more purpose to wander down some more streets and interact with some more people and see some more things. It'll just keep you more physically active and move more, but it doesn't require like any sort of crazy athleticism. You don't need to be diving over things or climbing trees to get good shots. Just walk around. If you can walk around, you'll see things, you'll take pictures, I and mean, that's what street photography is. It's walking around with your camera. The next thing, it'll keep your brain active. Learning something new will keep you young, will keep you fresh, will keep you interested. And photography, there's so many things to learn. You're not gonna run out of things to learn. I've been doing this for almost two decades now, and I'm still learning new things all the time. So whether you wanna learn a different genre of photography, practice portrait, landscape, macro photography, street photography, or you wanna learn more on the technical side of things as well, or both, there's always new things to grow into. There's always new projects that you can go out and shoot and go out and explore. So it'll keep you physically active, it'll keep you mentally active, and trust me, when you're learning something new, especially something like photography that you can continue to grow into, It'll keep you young, it'll keep you fresh, and it'll keep you happy. The second reason is for memories. I think every family needs a official documentarian. You know, when I grew up, we had my Uncle Jim, who was sort of our family photographer. Well, he was our family photographer. He was my aunt's husband. He took his camera to Thanksgiving, to Christmas, to birthday parties, and then whatever the next event was, he always had prints for us and handed them out. And it was so special, and you treasure those moments now, decades later, and every family needs that. So why can't that be you? You know, photographing your kids or your grandkids, it can be at any level you want it to be. It can be as simple as something as, yes, like I said, doing the birthdays, doing the holidays, but it can even be something more advanced if you're looking to grow into being like a documentary photographer, doing a deeper project, like, 
you know, say your granddaughter is studying to be a musician or learning a new hobby, you know, photographing that, or going to your grandkids' sporting events and documenting that. But it could be even more advanced than that. It could be their sporting events, but it could be their training for those events as well. So if you have grandkids that are, you know, interested in basketball or interested in ballet or interested in the arts, you know, photographing their journey. To have those memories later on, they can show their kids later on and their grandkids. Every family needs that. Every family needs a documentarian to capture those memories and they'll treasure that. And that will live on. Not only is it fun in the moment to be doing this because you take a step back and you can see things a little bit differently, but it's also quite fulfilling long term as well because those images will be used and, and appreciated for generations to come. Before we move on to the next one, I just wanna take a quick moment to remind you guys, I do have my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. Every month I take on five students, that's it, so you can check my website to see what's available, but I have a membership program that I mentor people. It's a flat fee month per month. Some people do it for one month just to kickstart their photography journey. Some people do it every single month. Those are for people that are really looking for something immersive, that really want to start a project and work with me closely. You have weekly assignments. I help you in your project online and offline. You have access to me via WhatsApp as well. I also have one-on-one -on -one classes for people looking for just a quick portfolio review and things like that. All that's available at justamott.com if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one learning from someone like me. The next reason it'll make you a more active traveler, you know, I think a lot of people when they're at the retirement age, they tend to travel, they tend to go on those like once in a lifetime trips they've always wanted to do, but they've never been able to do because they've been working so much or money was a factor, but now you've saved up, you're going on that road trip or you're going to Europe or whatever you're doing. But now with photography, you can travel with purpose, which is a lot more fun, I think. You know, like I've done so many travel stories throughout my entire career, but when you go to a place with your camera, you're gonna see it in a whole different way. You're gonna be more motivated to wake up at sunrise or to go out again and shoot at sunset or to sit in one location and capture a monument that you've always been intrigued by or even just capture street photography, You know, spending more time out there and waiting more time to get that perfect shot or to wander down those alleyways or to go to that market and talk to more people. It makes travel just more meaningful because you tend to, I know I do, I tend to interact with people more when I'm photographing. I mean, I don't do it right in the moment, but afterwards talking, asking questions, learning, it's just more of an immersive travel experience when you travel with your camera. It's just a gateway to see more things and to experience the local culture and immerse yourself with people more, interact with people more. And then just the memories later on, too. I mean, you have all those great memories and you've documented them and captured them. And it's so much fun to not only plan, then to do, but then afterwards to look at the photos as well and go through them, tone them, share them, or just to have for your own personal memories. And the last part I'm going to talk about is the community aspect. Photography is kind of weird like that. Like when I first started as an amateur, I was really, I really gravitated towards the community part of photography, sharing with other photographers, going out even shooting with them. I don't like shooting with other photographers so much anymore. I did used to like that and I liked going to coffee shops and sharing or even online. So whether your thing is like meeting people in person, you know, some people are introverts so they'd rather do that online a little bit more or sharing online. It's not comfortable sharing in person, but it can be quite fun. And the great thing about photography is it transcends age, you know? You can go out and shoot with someone. You could be 85 and go out and shoot with someone who's 25, and you're still going to have all those same things in common. Good light, good composition, a beautiful moment. And age doesn't matter. A good picture is what you're going to have in common. And, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. So I think it's a great way to share. It's a great way to grow, looking at other photographers' work, you know, having an online community, getting to know people in person. Because I always find it's better to share images, share your photos, like, because I'm per so personal about it with people that I actually know and met and talked to because I care about their opinion more because I know them. I don't like sharing so much with strangers. I mean, I do because I shoot professionally. You have to share with strangers. You share it to the world. But, you know, I think a lot of professional photographers, you start in a community setting, but then business gets in the way and competitiveness gets in the way and you end up being quite isolated. So I do miss that part of photography. And I think as an amateur and as a retiree, I think it's a great way to meet new people. It's a great way to interact with people from different generations, different ages, and even photographers with different interests and in so many different photo trips and things like that. So you could do it in person, you could do it online. Either way, it's just a great way to get together, meet new people who have similar interests and have that same love for photography. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Let me know if I've sold you on picking up photography as a hobby if you've recently retired. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do. Guys, don't forget, I do have all my one-on-one -on -one classes, again, at justinmott.com. You can see everything there. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments section. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day. Bye.